Hi, everybody. We're in season four, and I have a very special guest today that I've been dying to hear from. And you may have seen some of her writing because I think she's quite the writer. Her name is Chelsea, and I'm going to ask you to pronounce. How do you say the last name? Yeah, my name is so hard. So it's Chelsea Ola Miller, but it's just, it's one of those Chelsea. names. So I was even saying the first name wrong. It, well, my mom spelled it wrong. So it's spelled <laughs> like Chelsea. So everybody says it, but yeah, it's Chelsea Ola Miller. Well, um, I totally get the name thing. I mean, my name is Theo. That yeah. That is not my full name. That's short for Elizabeth. Both of oh, my grandmothers, my Thelma and Elizabeth, Elizabeth. So I get the name frustration. Wow, that's great. I never knew where Theo came from. So that's beautiful. Elizabeth. And I'm going to give you a little tip. Those of you that, out, that are out there that already know this, you're just going to laugh. When I go through a drive through or anytime I have to give my name for service, it is always so difficult. So I have gotten to where I just say Amy. Yeah. <laughs> I order pizza. And they say Amy. And my daughter's like, no, mom, they said Amy. And I said, I know that's the name I give when I go out. <laughs> That's what I need to do. Pick an easy name. Yeah, Amy. So anyway, Chelsea, thank you for being on Think Theo. And I just want you to just start talking and telling us all about you. Yeah. So um, I am an educator at heart. I started as a um, as a teacher, but then um, things quickly changed. My mom um, passed away in 2017. She was 57. And, um, she had had cancer, but the, the end came very quickly. And, um, I always say it was unexpected, even though, um, you know, it wasn't completely unexpected, but I think anytime you lose your mother, it is. And so, um, my life just kind of changed in, in 2017, in 2017, everything changed for me. I looked around and I have amazing family, amazing friends, but, um, I found that I was just alone. Nobody, um, you know, all my friends still had grandparents and, Nobody really knew what to do with me. I was changing. I was different. My, you know, goals in life were changing. And so I just started writing and I never anticipated really sharing it with anybody. Um, it just was kind of like that therapy for me and for a way to feel seen and understood. And so one day um, I kind of took my mom's advice. I had always written as um, a kid and just kind of showed my mom like a little journal. And she used to always tell me, you know, you need to write, you need to write. And I never listened to her until after, uh, you know, unfortunately she passed away. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try. And so there was um, a website here in Indianapolis and it's called Indianapolis Moms. And I just submitted my story to them. And I thought, you know, there are a lot of uplifting pieces about motherhood. So I don't know if I'll fit in. And they chose my work and asked me to come on as a writer. And that kind of just really changed my career trajectory wow, of things. Yes. And, I'm just so, so glad to hear that you're, you put your emotion into writing, which is what I do. Yes. It's exactly what you do. We are like soul sisters in that. I feel like our stories are, are very similar in how we kind of use our pain um, as a purpose to help other people um, and really just shine through being vulnerable and talking about things that a lot of people just don't want to talk about, you know? And so that's yes. why a lot of people feel so alone. And so eventually it led to my website, which is happiness, hope, and harsh realities. And it's now a social media brand. I think I have over 72,000 followers. And I knew you did. I was like, this girl, this girl has got it. I've got to get some tips from this girl. <laughs> I think it's just showing up. And, you know, I always say it's so sad that my following is it's bittersweet, you know, because it's both beautiful and also harsh in that, you know, I know the people that are following my page also have pain. And yeah. so it's just one of those things where I'm honored that they can find something that resonates with them. But also I hate that it even has to exist. I hate exactly. that we have to carry that pain and that grief. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, showing up as you are, you know, vulnerable and raw. And some days that looks like hope. And some days that looks like heartbreak and that's okay. You know, people need to know that both of those things can coexist and it ebbs and flows. And, you know, grief is just this uncharted territory for each of us. You know, when it first comes, it's different, even, you know, from losing grandparents to losing a parent, you know, we never know what to expect. So, yeah, you know, I'm, my book that I'm working on is my, it's called, um, the title is my grief is not like yours. 
And I did not title it that way so that everybody can get the book and be like, read about my grief. I titled it so that when you get the book, it becomes your title. Yes. My grief is not like yours. And that's in the way that somebody dies or in the way they lived or in the way, in the way that they died, you know, because what happens a lot of the time, and it's almost like a necessary evil. We categorize, you know, I had so many people and I know that you can say, amen to this. My mom died just about a year ago and it just takes a while, but you'll, you'll get better. So many people, and they were well-intentioned, but they hijacked they yeah. hijacked my grief and, you know, they, their mom didn't die the way my mom died. Their yeah. mom wasn't my mom. They all have their own unique DNA. And we, we recognize everybody or we try to recognize everyone individually here on this earth. Why not in their death? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I, I always say, you know, it's just so hard. People mean well, and their hearts are so good but you really truly don't understand, you know, it's kind of like those bullies that you had in like fourth and fifth grade. It's like, you know, words sting, even as adults, words sting. And, you know, those, those platitudes of like, they're in a better place, or, you know, this is just what was meant to be. It's like, my mom was 57. She didn't get to meet her grandchildren. And like, my sister had her first baby after my mom passed, I got married, you know? So those words really hurt, you know? And so I love the title of that book. I think I can't wait to read it first of all. And I just think, yeah, it's just so we need that. We need to know that our grief is unique and meaningful and it is just the way it's supposed to be because it's ours and it's our love. And so it's our path to, you know, finding a new way to honor that love still. Yes. And tell me about your writing. Tell me about your, you have a book you're working on or it's out or No. So, well, I have exciting things. So I'm really trying everybody on my page is like, when are you going to have a book? You know? And so my ultimate goal is to eventually have my own book. Um, it's not out yet. I'm really working on, um, really trying to find an agent right now. That's a good fit. And just, you know, really I'm trying to be patient and, you know, work Um, while I'm waiting and just see what happens. Um, but I am a writer for her view from home and, we just found out it's been a year in the making. Um, they are making a book through Tyndale Publishing and it's called So God Made a Mother. And um, they chose a, several essays to be in that book. And one of my essays was chosen. And so I am so excited because it, at least it's the first step. I don't have my own book yet, but um, in the spring of next year before Mother's Day, Um, wherever you get your books, Barnes and Noble, Target, wherever. um, So God Made a Mother will be out and people will be able to pick it up and see tons of essays about all of, you know, motherhood and mine will be tied to grief and the loss of my mother. Um, But how that's still a, you know, a good relationship to to have, you know, it just looks different than everybody else's. And so um, I, you and I are about to become best friends. Yes, we are. (laughs) I've been following your story and I'm like, we are soul sisters. We We really are. Now, what state are you in right now? I'm in Indiana. Oh, perfect. I've never been there. So I'm going to get there Come on up because my book is coming out. We're scheduling the launch for mother's day 23. And it is, Oh, I will promote it. I I will read it early and I will be your biggest fan. I know. I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I got chills because I thought this somehow we've got to connect these, these two books, you know, because my book is going to be the resource for those that are having a hard time with Mother's Day, because there's really not a lot, you know, out there for people that are, you know, people that actually dread the day. Yep. I mean, I dread holidays now. Now yes. I have a daughter. She's 23. She's beautiful. I love her. She's wonderful. I, I look forward to, you know, celebrating things with her, right. but deep down, I just feel cheated, you know, because, because she, my mom doesn't get to enjoy this. And yes, I know absolutely. Yeah. You just, but when you were saying it's coming out in the spring of next year, I was over here going, yes, yes, yes. That's, that's when they want my book to come out. Mother's mother's day 23. Yes. Yeah. And you're exactly right because, you know, it's the gift. Your book is going to be the kind of book that like, I'm going to buy myself for mother's day, you know, and I'm going to buy it for all my friends that you walk into a store and you see all these displays and, you know, you think I don't have anybody to buy for anymore. You know, I don't. And so your book, I'm going to pick up and be like, yes, I do. I'm going to buy this for myself because I'm going to still honor that relationship with my mother 
who is gone, but yet still in my life. And I'm going to use Theo's book to feel that love again and to honor my grief because you're right. It doesn't look like everybody else's and we still need something. So we feel, you know, seen and understood on those holidays and those big days. So that's a right. perfect day for, for um, you to be releasing that. Yeah, I'm super excited. And I'm so excited now to know that you've got that. You're, so how long is your essay in that book? How many words? Um, it had to be under like a thousand words, I think. I don't remember the exact word count. And of course, their editors changed, you know, and, and edited a little bit. But um, I think it's one of, I can't remember the exact amount of, it, it has somewhere between 60 to 80 essays within the book. Leslie Means, the um, owner of Her View From Home, kind of ties them all together with her own words. And we haven't seen it yet. I don't know what it looks like. I just know when it's coming out. And I'm so excited because most of the other writers that are in that that book are just people I've been looking up to for the past, you know, three, five years. And so to have my name sandwiched in between these writers that I find inspiration is just, it's a dream come true. It, it really was a dream come true. Oh, that, yes. I, I was just thinking when you do your book, you've already got somebody to write your forward or to, you know, yes. You've yeah, got that's that. my hope is that I can say, Hey, Leslie, or, you know, even any of these other writers, like, I want to yeah. do this now, <laughs> you know, write my forward. Yes. So, you know, Mother's Day is next year or any Mother's Day is very hard for people. And you and I are actually, you know, I say just like Winona Judd said after her mom had died, she was up on stage and she said she was broken and blessed. And she said, I don't know if y'all can understand that. And I was laying on my couch and I was like, I can understand it. I totally know what you're saying. Yes. Broken and blessed because we, we had great relationships with our mothers. We did. And I can just tell that from knowing you for just 17 minutes now <laughs> that you really had a relationship. Like my mom was like the best mom. I don't, I don't think there's, I've never met another soul that could have been as great a mom, you know, as she was, but there's a lot of people out there that don't have great relationships with their mothers. Yeah. So they can also find some comfort in these grief books because they also have a form of grief. Absolutely. Yes. And but, honestly, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, just yesterday I had a friend um, call me and she said, you know, are you free? I, I need a, a minute to talk. And she was so upset because she had had, you know, um, just, you know, a misunderstanding with her mom. And it's funny because they always preface it by saying, well, you know, I know you don't have your mom anymore and I should be grateful for mine. So I feel bad. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like my mom was amazing. She was wonderful, but not all moms are like that. And so sometimes, you know, you're grieving the relationship that you wanted with your mom, but maybe you don't have, or, you know, the connection that, you know, all these people tell you you're supposed to have, and you just don't, you know? And so I always tell my friends, like, you know, it's okay. And I really think that, you know, though you are exactly right, that's grief too. You know, you're grieving the relationship that you never had, or the relationship that you wanted, or, you know, even this you know, the mother daughter thing that, you know, the movies tell us we should have, or, you know, you might see other people having. And so that's grief too. You know, grief is yeah. just that, that loss of something, whether it's, you know, permanent or maybe not permanent, you know, I've heard those exact words. I had a lady tell me a couple of weeks ago over lunch that at mother's day, she and her sister spend three to four hours minimum in very, in all different stores looking for a mother's day card. Uh, because none of the cards fit. Thanks. And I thought right then, because I always have that entrepreneur type brain, I was like, oh, we need a, I need a Mother's Day card company that does sad Mother's Day cards, you know, yes. like, like I know our relationship because I was already writing them in my head. Yes. You know? I just, these, there's so many people out there and it doesn't get talked about. And I, I mentioned that in my book, I mentioned how um, Alzheimer's is not not really talked about that much, yes. it, you know, dementia, my dad has dementia. So I'm watching his decline and oh. not, not a lot of people want to talk about that because it is very, um, what's the word vulnerable, of course, but it, it's, it's, it's bad is not a heavy enough word, right. but, but they also don't want to really talk about grief and what it looks like. 
Yep. You know, we talk about the accident or we talk about the tragedy and complicated grief is kind of what my book focuses on. Yes. But we do not talk about the people left behind afterwards that are picking up the pieces, the people yes. that are left to hold it together, no matter what the, the living, you know, life is for the living. Right. But I just feel like there's a need for that out there. There's a need that we keep talking about this. And I've had, just like you, I've had people contact me because I write for the local newspaper here. Yeah. And they're, they're like, I'm so glad that you, you mentioned that it was raining on the day that your mom died because, or on the day that she was buried, because my, we just buried my grandfather and the weather was exactly the way that you described in your article. And that's, that's when I just, yes, that's when we know that we have helped one person. Yep. And that <laughs> means more than anything. Yes. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, just to that, that's also like, you know, with dementia and Alzheimer's, you have that anticipatory grief. Whereas yes. if you lose your parent in an accident or something sudden, you know, you're not anticipating that death the way that somebody with Alzheimer's or dementia. And I have several friends that have went through that and you're exactly right. It's, you know, I love looking at their pages. Um, Lauren Flake is one of my um, friends that writes about it a lot. And um, they, you know, you, you know, slowly you're losing your parent. And then you also have exactly what you just talked about. Then you also have to pick up the pieces while it's happening. And then also after it happens. And so it's just so, so complicated. And so when you can have somebody read your work and say, me too, you know, yeah. wow, it's such a powerful, powerful thing. Yes. I'm so thankful for people that are vulnerable enough to put it out there. Yes. You know, um, I've, I've recorded myself a couple of times where we live down by the lake, just crying. And I talked about this on another podcast, but I take random photos and this is in my book. I don't know. I take random photos of myself sometimes crying. Aww. If I'm crying, I'll just snap a quick photo on my phone. And I want to look back at those when I'm having a real strong day. And I want to tell that, that girl, it's okay. You're going to, you know, I want to look back. I don't want to forget the pain. Yes. And that's initially how it started out for me. I was taking, I took a picture of myself when we visited my mom's grave and I took a picture of my dad there. I don't want to forget that. Yep. I, you know, a lot of people, oh, I just, I can't even go to the cemetery. I, I can't even, you know, but I'm not that person. I'm that person that wants to get in it. Yes. And well, feel. If you, numb, if you numb it, then you're also numbing the love and the greatness. So just like you said, you know, not that remembering pain is like this great thing, but also it is because if you don't remember the pain, then you really can't honor the legacy and all of the greatness that you had and that you have still just in a different way, you know, right. and to remind yourself how beautiful that is to say on your best days, well, remember your worst because most people do the opposite. Well, on your worst days, remember the best, you know, and really it's that circle of all of it, you know, just that kind of spider web of beauty and, and brutal emotion and just tying it all together to remember that it all just equals love, love that you can't give anymore, love that you're still holding and just love, you know? Absolutely. I um, have a quote that I just actually wrote yesterday and um, it's, you know, kind of before one of my chapters and it says, I write so that others feel the way I feel, see what I see and love what I loved. Oh, yes. That's beautiful. That's it. Yes. I, that is why I write, you know, because we can get, and you know, this is a writer as a writer, we can get very um, complex and try to make things. So, and I, I just was like, scratch, scratch, you know, and I was like, what am I just trying to say in this chapter? What am I trying yes. to say? And it's as simple as that. Yes, absolutely. Yep. So that's tell me, I, uh, go ahead. That's what, I mean, it's all usually with grief and pain. And I always, it's always something simple and as harsh as that, you know, like it, it is what it is. It's both that, you know, you just have to really sit down and go, okay, it really is simple. You know what I mean? It comes down to hope and pain and love and all those things. And it's as simple and, and as harsh as that, you know? Yeah. So I yes. love that quote. 
Thank you. Tell me about your, what do you, what do you have ahead of you right now? I know you've got that spring book and your essay in there. What else have you got going on? Yeah. So I'm filming some pod. I have a lot of podcasts that um, I'm going to be guests on this summer. And so I've kind of filled up with that. Um, but really just trying to be consistent and show up for the people that are, you know, on my page and following my work. And I really just feel like right now, um, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm on the right path and I'm where I need to be helping the people that I need to. And so every day I'm just really trying to be consistent and dedicated to those people that, um, you know, need to hear my words and, um, I'm trying to read a lot, you know, I, I yes. love, um, when I get in writer's block, you know, I, I don't write, I just read, I just soak up as much as I can. And so That's great. I have a huge summer reading list. <laughs> so well, Next summer, yours will be on it. So. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, Stephen King says in his writing book, which I've read many times, he says, if you're not a reader, you can't be a writer. So yes, absolutely. I mean, and I have that book. I'm like halfway through. So yeah, it's love it. He does the audio also. And it's oh, really, really, it's neat to hear his voice, you know? Yes. Yeah, so. that would be really neat. I'll have to check that out. Maybe I'll do it for the last half of um, the book because it's a, a wonderful book. Do you have any of your work in front of you that you'd want to read like a paragraph or two? Um, I don't. Sorry, I, I just like sprung no. that on you. Yeah, I can definitely um, pull something up. But it so. didn't even come, it didn't even come to me until I heard, heard, heard that you were writing. And so I thought, well, maybe you, maybe you've got something that you'd want to read to the, to the people out there. Yeah, I have a shorter one. Um, Perfect. It's called the, so um, there's a couple of my pieces. So one of the best ones that, well, I don't want to say best, but one of the most um, popular pieces that I've written is actually called The Day She Dies. Um, and it's, I mean, it got shared on Her View From Home, like thousands and thousands of times. Wow. And I think um, just from my um, Facebook page, it has like 205,000 shares. Um, and so that's one of my most popular ones. But another one that, um, really resonated with people is called the day I became an adult. Um, yeah. So I, 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 said, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. You, yeah. You're going to feel this too, probably. So the day I became an adult, it wasn't the day I got my driver's license. It wasn't the day I got married or had children. None of those things made me feel like an adult. The truth is I did a, a lot of adulting before I ever actually felt like one that all changed the day my mother died. That day I became an adult, the kind of adult that doesn't have a mother. That kind of adulthood can't be ignored. It's the kind of adult that suddenly gains immense responsibility. Instantly, you have a new authority, one in which you never wanted. Losing a parent changes you. You feel like an orphan. The very person and soul that created you is gone, which means that portion of your being is gone too. You are different and you will remain different. It's impossible to be the same person you were when your parent was alive, walking around this world with you. The world is now empty of one of the most important people in your life. The world is now empty of all that we, they were and all that they gave. Because of that, the world now feels empty, even if it's still full of others that you love and adore. I became an adult the day my mother died. I gained responsibility and lost a piece of my soul all in the same second. Maturity found me, as did heartbreak. The day your parent dies, your future looks different. Pieces of it are stolen from you, moments gone, new memories no longer allowed. It's as if all their love, wisdom, and guidance drift into your existence the second they lose theirs. You are forever changed. If you wanna feel like an adult, wait until the moment you lose a parent. Adulthood finds you immediately and you are never the same. Oh my gosh. That is beautiful. Oh, that that is absolutely perfect. I'm going to have to ask you if we can put that in my book. Oh, thank you. I mean, you. that is absolutely like perfect. Oh, thank you. That's, I wrote that one day. Just, it just poured out of me. And that's honestly like most of my writing that, that I feel like I love the most is never planned. You know, no one ever said, Hey, can you write about this? It's just one day I'm riding the bike or out on a walk. And I'm just, it just pours out of me. I mean, most of my writing comes on my notes phone, you know, because I'm just, yes, yes. I'm, 
oh my gosh, yes. I'm in my car and I have to grab my notes and I have to talk it in really quick or I'll forget it. Yes, I do that. I have like 200 pages of just one liners pretty much (laughs) that I printed off and I'm, I have my book on my dining table chapters all laid out and I'm adding like this goes in that. And when you said orphans that actually, I talk about a a little bit of that in my chapter three. Nice. Uh, Yeah. So because nobody talks about that, you know, like I never knew that I would feel like that, you know, and I still have a father, like, you know, as do you. And I, I didn't know that that you could feel like that, you know, and that was very foreign to me. And I didn't know, you know, it was one of those things in grief where it shows up and you thought, well, no one ever talked to me about this, you know, kind of like the jealousy. No one ever talked to me about how jealous I would be of seeing, you know, other mothers with their children. And, you know, it just, it's one of those things, you know, being an orphan, I never thought that I would feel like that until the moment I did. And then I thought, right. Wow. This is new. You know? Oh, I was jealous of people that got to grieve. Because I was, I had to live with my dad right after, and I had to help take care of him for about six weeks. And I was jealous because other people were getting to go visit the cemetery by themselves. And when I went, my dad went with me. So I couldn't really cry. I was jealous of people that got to cry. Yeah. You know, you didn't get to hold yours because you were holding his too. Yeah. And yeah, so many things that you just said in that piece is that they're all like sprinkled in my book because you and I have the same feeling. We had such a wonderful mom. We lost her too soon. And, and there was something else I was going to say, and I totally lost it, but that happens so, so often. Oh yeah. did (laughs) Did you get grief brain? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. I mean, like, I felt like there were times where my mind failed me. You know, I thought I am a competent, you know, intelligent woman. And some of these things just, you know, I, I couldn't even explain it to people like, you know, and a lot of people are like, Oh, you walk into a room and you forget why you're there. And I'm like, no, it is way beyond that. You know, I mean, I would even, what really got me is when I would pick up the phone to call my mom all the time. Like, oh, what are you doing? And then I would get mad at myself. Like you are smart enough to remember that your mom died two years ago. Cause it wasn't just right afterwards, you know, when it was that reaction, it's still happening, you know? Mm -hmm. not that long ago, I, I was saying to something big happened and I was so excited. And, and I said, Oh, I need to call my mom and tell her that out loud. I said this to my friend and I, and then they looked at me and I looked at them and I was like, I know I'm sorry. And then the tears were just flowing because I said, I know that I can't, but I still want to. And I don't think because the desire to call her and to talk to her will never go away. I don't think that that will ever change either. I think because mm-hmm. I want to, I'll always think I can. Yeah. You know? And you know, I, my mom was deaf, so I never got to talk to her on the phone, but we text. So sometimes I will just text oh. uh, it, what used to be her number. I don't know who that person is. They've never responded. Oh, and, yeah. and, you know, and I just text and say, I love you. And my sister and I kept doing that even, you know, a few months after the accident, we would still be on our group text with my mom and we would still be texting, you know, like, good night, mama. And just, you just, your brain, like three days after my mom's accident, I was on our farm. It was on the farm. I was on the four wheeler and I was riding really fast because I saw something and I was headed over to it. And I thought it was something in the grass and I hit a plow that was under the grass and I had to get like seven stitches in my elbow. And then two days later, I was backing out of the garage and I scraped the entire side of my sister's car with my car. Oh my gosh. I I was off. My equilibrium was off my balance, my brain. I, I was completely, I was like destructing, you know, I, yes. the stitches and there, here I am at the funeral and the visitation with this huge bandage on my elbow and not able to bend my arm and all that. Yeah. And I thought that happened though, probably to slow me down. Cause I yes. was just at full force speed, you know, as you yeah. probably were that week of preparation. Yeah. I always tell people like, you know, it, and it may seem silly to some, but I feel like you, you will probably get this, but I've said this before to several of my friends, like, you know, you get, you, you drink alcohol or you have a medication and it says, do not operate, you know, heavy machinery and don't do this and don't do that. And I'm like, grief needs to come with some kind of warning label and not just for me, but for you. So it tells me like, I need to slow down and I need to really pay attention and be in the moment and, 
and just stop for a minute. And then I need other people to have a warning label like, okay, listen, she's really delicate and tender, tender right now. And you know, proceed with caution. <laughs> you know, there needs to be warning labels for grief. Yeah. The best advice I got was from my counselor at that time. And she had been my counselor for like 18 years. She was amazing. And then she died suddenly six months after my mom. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. So I, she talked to me the night of the accident because my dad was just, he was saying words that I, you would never hear a preacher say because he's oh. a retired minister. Yep. And it was really scaring me. I became a little child that night because yep. I, my mom was gone and I'm with my dad and he is not the dad that I knew. Yes. And she said, let him say those words because those words carry the weight of how he feels. Oh. So there's so many things that I've learned from her during those six months after the accident through complicated grief therapy, but the words carry the weight. So you've got to let people say them and also let people know that just go ahead and openly say, I'm, I'm grieving. I'm not really my same self right now. Yeah. And people do need to be gentle with you. And unfortunately, grief is the time that separates the adults from the children. Yep. And you see the true colors of people. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that was some of the best advice that I got because that has, that has happened in my life. Yes. Oh, yes. And I think it also, it reminds me that, you know, I would tell people like, you know, I don't want to be fixed. I don't need it. You cannot take this pain away from me, you know? And so what I need is I need you to be willing to sit with me on my darkest days as much as my lightest days. And I need you to accept both of these because, you know, I, I'm, I'm transforming into this new person that's going to have to hold this grief forever. And I need you to love both of these people who I am, who I'm going to be, you know, who I was and just be willing to sit with me and not make me feel like I have to hide my grief because then it becomes another responsibility on top of just holding loss, you know? And so I think those are the, the friends I feel the most blessed to have are the ones that are just willing to do that, to sit with yes. me in all of it, you know, absolutely. And not try to fix it. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to be fixed because I want to feel this pain right now because that means that I'm remembering her and not forgetting her. Absolutely. And, and I never, ever will or want to forget her. Exactly. Exactly. Everything that I do is to make her proud. Everything. Yes, absolutely. And um, I've had, I've so much enjoyed having you on Think Theo and, you know, season four is titled Music is Healing. And I know we didn't really talk about music in a song, but my mother was deaf. So she never really understood or heard music. She didn't hear the melody or the tune, but she read words. She read lyrics. So what you read today was our music. Aww, because you. my mom would have read that and thought it was absolutely beautiful because she always talked about how much she missed her mother all the time. She never let that go. She always said, my mother would have made my mother. She always said, I love my mother so much. And we had the Mahalia Jackson song at her funeral from um, the Imitation of Life movie. And if you've never read the lyrics to Trouble of the World, read the lyrics to Trouble of the World, Mahalia Jackson. It is gorgeous, beautiful. And my mom never heard music and she did not want music at her funeral, but she loved those words. Oh, that's so beautiful. So that's I'm why just, we had. I'm so glad that we got to talk because um, you're just a light in this space and I'm just honored to share it with you. You are a light. I felt like I was the dimmer today. Oh I my was gosh, a, you're great. Crying and, you know, sometimes we have good and bad days. And anyway, we have less than a minute now. How do people um, find out about you and start following you? Yeah, so I'm on um, www.hopeandharshrealities.com. And Hopeandharshrealities.com, people. Hope and Harsh Realities. And we're going to put, we're going to tag that on this. Yes. And also um, my Facebook page is happiness, hope and harsh realities. Oh, great. Okay. I don't know if I'm on your Facebook page. Yes. You need to get on there. <laughs> okay. Chelsea is Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea, thank you so much for being on. And I want you to have a wonderful rest of the day. Yes. Thank you. And we need to connect again. Oh, don't worry. I'm about to get on my Facebook messenger and get your cell phone number. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Bye everybody. Keep smiling.